We are proud to have uh, PNU and Guinness, not the beer, <laughs> from Exodus Privacy. So it's analysis of the behaviour of mobile application and its consequences for our privacy. Thank you. So hello everybody. And I'm going to start by presenting who we are and what we are doing. So uh, we are so PNU and my, my name is Guinness. And we will talk about uh, the behavior of uh, mobile applications, and especially about trackers which are inside these applications, and uh, what we are trying to do to make people aware of the trackers. And who we are, uh, we are so, a group of French activists, a non-profit uh, organization, which was founded in October, uh, 2017, and uh, we are we have an undefined number of members. Like we are eight to ten active people, but we have many supporters and people around us uh, speaking and helping us working. And uh, we have uh, some collaborations with uh, the Yale Privacy Lab, which is. Um, a legal issue laborat research laboratory uh, in the US. And uh, we have a collaboration with F-Trade also in order to integrate uh, our reports in uh, the F-Trade uh, application and platform. And also we obey some strict, strict legal rules in, that way, in the way that everything we do is legal. So for example, we do not decompile application since it is forbidden in France except for research reasons and we are not a research laboratory. Uh, Hello everyone. Uh, so what is our goal? As Guinness said, this is to make people aware of the tracking which is done by your mobile. How do we do this? So we develop a, a platform which is called Exodus, a privacy auditing platform. Uh, it will identify trackers in mobile applications, um, just Android applications actually, uh, just looking for code signatures. Uh, as Guinness said, we cannot decompile applications, so we just uh, statically analyze the files, the APK files, and we look for uh, signatures. And then I think uh, we'll give a bit more details about this uh, in a few slides. Um, the goal of this tool is to really show people and uh, make you understand what is in the Android application so we don't um, give judgments to it, to it, we just show what is inside the application so that you are aware of it and you can make your own decisions about this. Uh, this is an example of the, of the Exodus uh, application. Um, this is an example of a report uh, about uh, Meteo France which is uh, uh, the public uh, weather forecast uh, group in France and the application as you can see you have in some informations about the application here uh, downloaded more than five billion, uh, million times and the important part is on the left Oops, sorry uh, the number of trackers and permissions so the permissions are pretty uh, simple uh, we just add the, the levels on the right which is uh, defined by Google uh, they have three levels uh, dangerous normal and and special and on the left is the interesting part as well, is that the trackers, uh, it's said that we just found the code signatures of this one, and on, in this case you have 22. But what is a tracker? Because that's the important part here. A uh, tracker is a piece of software which is meant to collect uh, data about your usage of the application. Uh, you have some example on the on bottom, like uh, Google, Analytics, Google Analytics or Timo. Uh, on the Exodus application, you can see this is a report uh, page about the tracker. Uh, you can see a couple of information about the tracker itself, uh, its name, uh, the location, the website. So this is a uh, flurry from uh, Yahoo. And you can see how we detect it. So here you have a code detection rule and network detection rule. So if we find this code in the application, we will flag and say that uh, the tracker is, is in it. Uh, here you can see that there is 8,220 uh, reports actually uh, currently in the applications with this tracker. But how do we do this in detail? I will let Guinness say that. Thank you. So uh, 
basically what we are doing is some static analysis of the APK. Uh, so we just list uh, Java classes which are embedded in the APK, in the APK with a tool called TextDump, which is provided by Google. And uh, then, thanks to the code signatures, which are some regular expression, we just match against uh, the, um, the, uh, the Java classes we have found. Um, and uh, the tools we are using in the platform, so we have Gplay CLI, which is a tool which allows us to download the APK directly from the Play Store uh, in, um, in CLI. Uh, we use Androguard, which is a tool uh, which allows some analysis and work on the APK, and we use it mainly in order to detect the permissions uh, required by the application. And we use SODDEXDEM to list uh, Java classes, uh, which is a tool provided by Google and which is open source, so we can check that they, well, it works the way we want it to work. And so in a small graph, it is lazy, so we have the APK file, uh, which we unzip uh, to list the DEX files. And with DEX dump, we uh, dump the Java classes. We have our attractor signatures, and we match it. So uh, what is important here is that we need to know the tracker signatures in order to detect uh, trackers. So we have to build a list of trackers that uh, we know to be trackers. How do we do this? Well, it is mainly people who contribute to it. Like, well, I have seen something weird on the network and I just look uh, and try to find if what is it, uh, which company does, uh, wh where does it come from and which company uh, provides this. And uh, in, uh, well, the first version of uh, Exodus platform when we, it was created was broadly this, like dex dump and some sorting and we match. Thank you. Uh, so we have a couple of tools. Uh, the first, the one we already showed you, the Exodus web platform. Um, so you can freely go to the Exodus platform. You can search for reports. You can ask for new reports. Uh, I think important thing to say is that we don't analyze application all the time. We just do it on demand. So if there is a report that you are looking for and it's not in the application, you can simply uh, ask for new analysis. And in a couple of seconds, maybe minutes, uh, you will have the report with the permission and the and the uh, trackers. Uh, this is just to show a couple of tools how it's working. Uh, the Exodus core is in Python. Um, the web application is in Django. And we are using a couple of tools to provision our machine and to make it auto automatically. Uh, we have other tools as well to make this uh, more usable for everyone. Uh, we have a sorry Android application, which will simply get the list of application on your phone. It will, uh, for each of them, get the report and show you directly. So here you can see uh, that you don't have to go to the website. It will directly show on your phone uh, the report, and you can open it and see the details. Um, the Exodus application does not have any tracker, obviously. <laughs> you can check it on Exodus. Uh, <laughs> and it's available uh, on F-Droid and also on Google Play. Uh, there's as well Exodify uh, um, extension. Uh, actually, it was not done by us. It was just um, done by um, the community, let's say, and we have, it will add the reports information directly on the Google Play Store uh, web page. So it's quite convenient. You can directly see a uh, number of trackers and it can give you a link. Oop. So directly on the application, you can see number of tra tra trackers on the left. Uh, if you click on it, uh, for instance, you can see the fourth one on the first row, it's unknown. You can directly submit. It will link you to the Exodus web application uh, web page to submit a new analysis. Uh, there is a last tool we can talk about. It is called Exodus Standalone. Uh, actually, it can be used by um, Android application developers. 
uh, because that's also important to know that sometimes the developers are even not aware that there are trackers in their own applications. So with this, you can statically analyze your application before you publish it. Uh, you just give your APK and it will um, show you the list of, of trackers and permissions in text or JSON. Uh, important thing to note is that is only on Linux, so it doesn't work on any other platform. Uh, well, I can just complete. So when we created Exodus standalone, so we had some issues, kind of issues. One, uh, we created uh, some reports for the Quant application, so Quant uh, web, uh, the search engine, and uh, we found some trackers, and they say, what? We don't have trackers in our applications. We are privacy friendly and everything. And say, well, the report can't be false. If we found the trackers, the Java classes were embedded. And actually, what happened is that it was included in uh, SDK, included by um, uh, Quant in their applications. So sometimes the developers are not aware that they are adding some trackers. They are just using some SDK or some uh, starting pack of SDK for a new application which embed trackers. And eventually we created Exodus standalone for uh, developers to check when they are pre uh, writing the applications uh, to check that they do not embed some trackers. Yep, it's, I think you can note that they removed the trackers, I yeah. think, really quickly, so that could be noted. Uh, yep, I think giving you back. Well, okay. <laughs> so. Um, what are the first results we've had in like one year and a few months? So, um, as I said uh, before, we created the organization in November, uh, November 2017, and for now we have identified uh, 152 trackers and analyzed more than uh, 48,000 applications. Uh, we help developers like Quant clean the applications, as I said before, and uh, also we try to provide some uh, advices to developers in order to to clean the applications and to respect privacy of uh, the users. And uh, we did also some uh, deeper audits of some applications, uh, like network audit, because uh, what is important is that in our uh, method, it is only a static analysis, so we cannot be sure that um, the trackers, the trackers, is effectively uh, used by the application. It could be embedded but never called, and then we find it but uh, it is not used. And so uh, with a network audit, you can check if some packets are sent on the network. Okay. And, um, and uh, we did some audits for Baby Plus. We have a slide for this, uh, and I will explain uh, just after what we can find on it. It is quite impressive. And also, we provide some statistics on which trackers are the most present in the applications, which are less present, uh, how many applications we have analyzed. And uh, we open the REST API, which allows to query for trackers, applications, uh, uh, the, the list of uh, all the trackers um, we have identified. And also, we are trying to educate people um, on the trackers, and so we created some small videos, uh, which are for now in French and English. Um, there are and, and yeah, and we have also some subtitles. And it is the aim is to have some extremely easily understandable videos, like for your children. And it's quite, it's, it's uh, interesting to see, it's very, it's a, I don't know how to say it, but just look at it. It's on our YouTube uh, channel and our PeerTube uh, peer, peer tube instance. And everything is free and open source, for sure. 
So the most frequent trackers we have identified, so Google Firebase Analytics and Google Ads, which are in 50%. Uh, and then we have so a lot of Google and then Facebook and other trackers. And uh, as I said before, Baby Plus. So uh, we installed Baby Plus on, an, on uh, an Android device, which had never been connected to Facebook. And uh, we launched uh, the Baby Plus application, and we gave some information like uh, the name of the baby and what we can see uh, on the report. We know that uh, it goes to graph.facebook.com, so the, um, the domain which, uh, which uh, collects uh, data from the trackers. And we can see the gender, the name, if it is breastfed or not, and we know from which application it comes. And yeah, just to finish, so we are in the press. We got some big coverage in the first six months. Uh, we are helped by this by the Yale Privacy Lab to get coverage, for instance, in the Intercept or the Guardian. Uh, yeah, we had a nice visit with the CNIL. Uh, we will use Exodus for preliminary, preliminary uh, investigations. Uh, we are on, we're on TV as well, but I think we'll just conclude with uh, some final points. Uh, how do we communicate and how do we make people aware of this uh, beside our tools? Uh, we have stickers. There are some uh, in the entrance if you want when you leave. Uh, flyers. We have, as we said, um, channels on YouTube and Peertube and obviously accounts on Twitter and, and Mastodon and Facebook. And we use conferences like today to talk about us. And to finish, what's the future? Uh, the first point is to revamp the reports. We want to make them as user-friendly as we can uh, because we really want to target everyone. And for that, we want to make as well more videos and podcasts to explain the tracking on mobile, translate our videos, and really gather more and more motivated people to help us. Um, that will just lead me to the next slide. Yes, we need help. Um, yeah, we really, I think, need any kind of, of contributions. It can be in code. We have, uh, as we talked about, um, Python, uh, with Java in the Android application, um, or as well if you have uh, sysadmin uh, uh, skills. But as well, if you want to make videos, translate videos, make any kind of pedagogic content, this is useful for us, or even spread the word. So, word, so anything is really useful. You have every information on the contribute page, and we have as well a contact, contact page with all the information if you want to contact us or if you have any questions related to this. And I think that will, yes, conclude our presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Hi, I'm, I'm Joris. I'm a, I'm a legal scholar. Uh, I, I have a question about, uh, I mean, uh, compliments for your work. This is really great, but shouldn't the apps themselves just be transparent about these things? And shouldn't Google just have a repository of all these things? I mean, they must be scanning the apps statically, dynamically. What is, like, what is your vision for the future? Where should this transparency be provided? Should your work be necessary in five years? Uh, I would I think that's a good question. Um, for instance, if you use Yelp, which is a tool to download applications uh, from the Google Play Store without Google accounts, uh, they actually integrate Exodus. So you can just activate in the option and they have directly the information. Uh, F-Droid as well is scanning their applications with Exodus before putting it in the, in the store. Uh, I think it's hard to answer for Google. So I think we'll be happy if they, if they integrate our reports in the Google Play Store. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think our goal is to make people aware of it. We spread the word uh, the, as much as we can. And but yeah, I think the the point is to really target developers because they have to be aware of what they are doing. And at least if if they know, if the public knows, then everything is transparent. There any other question? Yep. Uh, 
Uh, once a user downloads your report and finds out what trackers and permissions are being used, like what should we do next? What's the next step for someone? Well, there are multiple possibilities. Uh, so you can, if you want, contact the developer and say, well, I have found this tracker in your application and it seems weird to me, so why is it here? I, or, or you can ask to remove it. Or if you want, don't not want to contact the developer because you know they want to remove it, you can use an application which is called Locada and which uh, acts as a kind of VPN which will uh, block uh, outgoing uh, packets based on detection rules like uh, DNS, DNS names. For example, you can say, I want all packets going to uh, ads.google.com to be blocked and they will not go out after uh, blockada. Blockada, B-L-O-K-A-D-A. And it's quite impressive. You have some pre-compiled pre lists of, uh, of uh, the uh, name that can be blocked, which are uh, more or less aggressive. You have some very loose list and some very aggressive list, which will block all Twitter.com, for example. Yeah, I think there are a lot of ways you can as well use mobile version, a lot of the web mobile version if you can, because like this you can more control what you are doing with your browser. Uh, you can use another application if there is another one which is more respecting your privacy. But yeah, for instance, Quant, once they were aware, they removed it. Maybe if everyone is communicating about it, everyone will just remove it. Who knows? But yeah, it's a decision you have to do. Check all your apps and make a decision for each of them. Um, do you intend to develop a similar tool to uh, IPA-based uh, applications on iOS? Yeah, good question. Uh, actually, we cannot do that because we cannot uh, uh, check the application because of DRMs. So we are not allowed to do it. Uh, but that's a really frequently asked question. What we can say is that uh, often the apps are made by the same people and the trackers w which exist on Android exist on iOS, so you can just assume that it's basically the same. If you have any other question, just come to see us. I think we can discuss outside or after it. Sorry. Thanks.